Mr. Paul. <laughs> yes, sir. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Always good to see you, man. Always good yeah. to see you. Yeah. It's October, bro. I know, right? Times are flying, man, and stuff's are changing in the world. Yeah, so many things happening. And uh I I I uh messaged you because I thought we would do this video and, and you know what I see lacking what obviously I'm sure people know by the title that we're gonna be talking about this uh what's going on in Israel. If you don't know, all you gotta do is turn your TV on. But basically what I seen a lack of, brother, is a lack of Christian content from a Christian perspective through a biblical perspective, because yeah. I, I feel like a lot is left out. And uh, when people watch the news and see Hamas and they hear the word terrorist and they hear Palestinians and Israel and and, and it, it gets confusing. And I think that the more content Christians put out, the better so people can see from a biblical perspective. And that's why I was like, man, you know what, I'm going to. As Paul, if he wants to do a Zoom, <laughs> that's what made me get a hold of you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome, man. Yeah, we should be talking about this because, um, you know, obviously at times like this, you know, hopefully everybody's, you know, in their word, reading the Bible uh, before the news and, you know, just uh, staying close to God, man, and, and, and feeling what he feels because there's one thing we know in the Bible that uh, over and over and over again, God's heart for Israel is huge. He says yeah. just, just some of the things he says, like, you know, like a mother hen, I, I would have liked to put you on under, under my wing, but you were unwilling. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when the Bible says in, uh, I think it's Matthew where he came to save his people from their sins. And, you know, obviously he came for the world. We know that, but he had a special place in his heart for Israel. I'll bless those who bless you. Those I'll curse those who curse you. You know, and God has a special place in his heart for Israel. And the enemy knows that. The devil knows that. Mm -hmm. And thus the attacks, man, the attacks that yeah. come against what, uh, what I, the people. It's crazy. What what I feel is going to happen, and that's another reason why I want to say it on here to document this, is I believe that if this if this goes further and they don't find a way to stop, that the world is going to turn against Israel. Yeah. Um, the way the media is going to spin it, the way all of these things, and uh, mark my words, if this goes further, that even Christians will get turned against Israel. I agree. Uh, th this is part of what Jesus says, that, that even the very elect, you know, will be deceived. Yeah. And um, I'm saying this and, October 9th, 2023. And I hope yeah. it doesn't, you know, that's how do you would so you agree with that? A hundred percent, bro. I was I was I was already in my mind gonna bring this up, bro. And it's it's kind of hard to talk about, bro, because you know, a lot of uh you know what will you what what the world would call conservatives, but you just yeah. speak a Christian, they're targeted. So anything you say online, you yeah. never know. But I'm gonna say this and is uh what I predict is gonna happen with you know, right now, I believe. That uh, and you know the Bible says you know you give honor to the king, you know. Yeah. So, so I understand we pray for our president, but I also feel that the president is speaking with two, like uh, kind of like a serpent with two. He's gonna say I I support Israel, yeah. But I predict this is my statement that just for me, I believe you know as soon as we see Israel going in, taking care of business, defending themselves like we did September 11th. They're going to go in there and they're going to start. And one thing the the Palestinians, Hamas is good at is making Israel look like the bad guy. Yeah. So the media, Biden is going to, this is what I mean. He's going to speak, start speaking with two. I understand you got to defend yourself, but there has to be restraint. And, you know, he's going to start yeah. little by little. Him and the media are going to start turning against Israel. They're going to start putting these things out with little kids crying in the street and and it's going to go on and uh you know israel has every right to defend themselves i believe you yeah. know I, I really believe the administration is going to start turning and and uh just for those of you who don't know our administration right now with under president biden gave just gave six billion dollars to iran okay they gave six billion dollars to iran Iran is the number one 
I mean, I, I, yeah, Iran. Iran is the number one state sponsor of terrorism. Hamas is funded by Iran. So, so it we has pay six billion to them. Where do you think they get these money for these rockets, bro? Where yeah. do you think they get the humanitarian aid that we send over, money that people send over? They take, they're making these rockets, bro. And it's sad, bro. It's sad that uh, our administration is even sending them any money. I, I heard it was up to seven thousand rockets got missiles got fired into Israel. Crazy, you know. And it's interesting that you bring the, that up because it's 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 chess. It's not checkers, you know. And and we know. See, here's the thing: is that those of us that read our Bibles, those of you that that study your Word, you know this is coming. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus warned us about this. The Bible warns us about this. So uh, it's not it's not a thing to be surprised because. It's more of, it was never a what if, it's when, you know, and this is why, like, regardless of how people feel about, like, let's say, like you said, conservative views or whatever, regardless of how people feel, um, the main goal is we need to reach people for Jesus, because no matter what, the end is coming. And yeah. it could be now, it could be 100 years from now, but the fact is, we all have an expiration date, and and tomorrow um, is not promised, and today is a day of salvation. And my thing is, you know what, I'm going to, we want our house to be in order, to be in order, to be in a right standing with God, regardless of what happens. Yeah. Regardless of the administration, regardless of what all these countries are doing. But you got to remember, Iran is the country that said that the president at that time said that they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. That is quote unquote. Monday, yeah. I believe it, it was even said Monday. Monday. Yeah. Uh, last Monday. It was even oh, really? said, it was even said that um what was it Des destroy we want to destroy Israel and the USA so yeah you know you know and and I do want to say this too that I know that a lot of believers like here's a, here's what it's not so black and white brother because obviously those um the babies crying the Palestinians those are real people that are really hurting too. And and it's it's what's horrible is the fact that you have a group of people that are probably all dis, disgruntled against Israel, but then you have the extremists that are actually going and doing something, and then when they do something and it gets retaliated, then they show the families because you know there's there I have heard of maybe about a year ago I heard um, I can't remember where but there was a sweeping of revival of. Palestinians giving their life to the Lord. I don't know if you've heard that. This no. is about a year, year and a half ago. No. So God is moving in, in, in those in those people too. And it's like, unfortunately, just like us, okay, for instance, if we're not happy with our current administration, but we love America, we can love our nation, but not be happy with government. And I have a feeling that it's not so black and white. I believe there's some Palestinians that love their nation or their people, but they're not happy with the people that are calling the shots. Because unfortunately, same thing with Israel. Um, I don't know much about the leaders of Israel. Mm -hmm. And when I say we stand with Israel, I'm not necessarily saying that I don't know that government. What I'm saying is that this is the promised land that God gave Abraham. Yes. So that's when I say I support Israel, I am saying that in the same way I say I love America. Right. You know, I get and, it. Yeah. Same thing. You know, so I, I think I want people to differentiate the people in power compared to the nation or what the nation stands for. Right. That's a good point, man. That's a good point. And I, I have heard um, that the people both most being most receptive, like I'm sure you Grace International and then the the ministry that I'm involved with, you know, we got a bunch of ministry over there, but yeah. I've heard a bunch of the people who are coming to the Lord are the Palestinians, you know? Yeah, exactly. And for some reason, Israel the, has hardened their heart. Yeah. You know, they don't accept, most of them don't accept Jesus as their Messiah. You yeah. know, it's very rough ground, man. And it's probably not gonna, it's not gonna yeah. happen except through the tribulation, you know? Yeah. But, uh, it's crazy, man. It, it, it's crazy. And uh, yeah, man, it's a great point that, you know, it's not so black and white. This is one situation right here where, where the Palestinians, well, I should say Hamas. Yeah. Israel was doing the kind thing. I heard they were letting in like, you know, 25,000 people a day to come work and yeah. do all this stuff. And then they would go back and come back. But 
the Hamas looked at that. Ah, there's a way in. There's a way yeah. in. So they came in, they took advantage of it, and they did what they did. Over 700 dead, a couple of thousand hurt. But also, I'm seeing that, uh, man, our southern border, bro. Our I, southern I, border. Yeah. How many of them are coming up here and yeah. just waiting, plotting, because this administration is letting people just come in, and they're plotting and planning against us, bro, and they're going to hit us from within. And, and I'm oh, glad that's what I'm scared of. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because the the media has stirred it up that if you say anything against um against an open border, like you're looked at as racist or whatever. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, time out here. You know, I, I was talking to a brother down in Imperial, which is really close to the border, right? Uh, down by when I was in Oceanside, and he came to have dinner with that Southern San Diego, and I asked him, I said, hey, I said, is is the news exaggerating? And he says, no, they're coming by the busloads. And then, and then before he even, before I got to say anything, he says, they're not Mexican. He goes, he goes, so why is it that Mexicans get so riled up when you bring up border control? He goes, these people on the bus are not Mexicans. They're, they're Africans. They're from the Middle East. They're this, they're that. He goes, so he goes, it's crazy. He goes, they're just coming by the bus loads. You know, so I think that us, because I know mostly Chicanos are going to watch this video for the majority and you got to get it out of your mind that when somebody says uh, border control, that it's a racist thing against Latinos or Mexicans. It is right. not. It is a safety issue because here's the thing that in the same way Hamas infiltrated into Israel is, I believe, is the same thing that's happening in America right now. And if they start doing stuff here, it's our families that are going to suffer. They're not like, oh, let's not hurt them. They're Mexicans. We're going to get hurt. <laughs> it's all of us. It's going to be our schools. It's going to be our malls. It's going to be yep. our stuff, you know? Yep. And, and this is why it, it just, it's very frustrating, you know? And and it could get scary, scary for our families. Yeah, man, I don't, you know, man, anybody who would be against the a border wall and, you know, having them remain in Mexico until they could go to fight their asylum and maybe they'll win and be let in. Um, I don't know who who leaves their doors wide open at night when they sleep yeah. like oh, just whatever keep your doors open. don't don't lock your cars when you go to the store it's racist you know? to lock your car yeah it's just like dude come on dude yeah so so so, so i just think it's lame that you know you want to lock your thing and our, our 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 current president wants to have a wall around his house and 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 security but we can't secure the border yeah. it's like come on dude people are being hurt if you look up, uh, there's a guy, I forget his name right now, but he just posted today about some young girls that were, you know, something bad was done to them by an illegal alien who held them hostage, yeah. a couple of girls. And, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just very sad what's happening, bro. Yeah. So, so man, this is definitely, bro, like Paul the Apostle in his time called these the last days. Yeah. So imagine how much closer we are. Yeah. How much closer we are, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. But like, yeah, and my main thing, like I said, is a Christian perspective. In case somebody, okay, I'm gonna take the stance that maybe somebody somebody watching doesn't really know what's going, who Hamas is or whatever. Is basically the Palestinian people were there in Israel before, you know, um, before the they became Israel. And what happened was during World War II, I think a lot of it was because of the way the Jews were treated by the Nazis that they gave him their land, Israel, the original Israel, Jerusalem, and, and all those areas, they gave it back to the Jewish to make a Jewish state. Well, the Arabs around there got really angry. And um, the people that were there were Palestinians. So, I mean, we can go back and forth on this. I mean, I'm sure that was horrible for the Palestinian people that were there to say, all of a sudden, I lost my home. I get it. I get it. That's like California used to be Mexico. So there was people here that own ranches and 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 they own businesses and all of a sudden this part this became a part of America and all of a sudden these these Mexican ranchers lost their land lost their inheritance so I get it I get it wow. but then what happened after that is that um so there's been conflict between Palestinians and and Jews that started coming in from all over the world so let's fast forward now a few years ago um, the Palestinians wanted to take over the Gaza Strip. 
and it got so bad. So if some of you remember, maybe you didn't pay attention. There was fighting going back and forth, fighting for back and forth. So basically, Israel said, you know what? You want the Gaza Strip? You can have it. And basically, it became a giant, like an Indian reservation, in a sense. But, you know, in, uh, Native Americans can can come and go in our, in America. But there they were said, you know what? This is too much of a conflict. Let them have it. And they basically held them in there. And uh, so that's kind of the conflict, guys, is so within Palestinians, a group named Hamas, funded by Iran, um, is is causes these terrorist things. So that's why you hear Hamas. Now, up north in Israel and Lebanon is another group called Hezbollah. Hezbollah is also considered a terrorist group, and they are also supported by Iran. So you got Iran pulling strings in the north and south of Israel, and this could turn really, really ugly. Yeah, and also to add to that, um, right now there was going to be some peace accords kind of going on between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Yeah. There was that peace going on. So definitely Iran did not want that to happen. So just before we came on, I was watching, and it's yet to be verified, that uh, one of the newspapers from America had gotten – info that iran green lighted this whole thing that yeah. iran gave the weapons green lighted it whatever and it's still yet to be they say they, they got confirmation but it's still yet to be verified right so i don't want to say for sure yeah but um if iran did that man i think we could see uh israel going and bombing their sites their their nuclear sites and also yeah. It's going to be interesting to see as uh, Israel is probably going to be invading these next few days into Palestine. I shouldn't say invading, defending, going and finding the people yeah. who did this and trying to get the hostages back. And here's the main kicker, man. Uh, Americans were killed and Americans now are hostages. Yeah. There were the so Americans who got held hostage. Yeah. So far, so, they, there could seven confirmed American deaths so far. And that's crazy. Some, some that's crazy. So, so, so the Palestinians... Or Palestinian, I should say Palestinians. I should they're regular people. I'm talking about Hamas. Yeah. Hamas is saying, hey, we'll give you back these hundred or so uh hostages. You release every five all the five thousand people yeah. you got of Hamas and all that stuff. Release them all. And that ain't gonna happen, bro. Yeah, it's ain't not gonna, gonna happen. happen. Release all the criminals that have been bombing your your, your state. Yeah. Yeah. No way, man. And uh you know, this is going to sound weird too. Is just I don't I don't understand why how Israel with this happening, Israel they know where the leader of Hamas is. You know what I mean? They know where he stays. They know where his house is. I don't understand how come. Yeah, he's one a shot the, caller, but I give political purposes. They won't go get him. You know, one of the leaders though they did find his body recently. Yeah, I just heard this this morning. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. I'm not sure which leader. I don't. I don't know anything to be honest with you as far yeah. as the Hamas leadership. But I did. Yeah. Now that's just what the news. Uh, well, it wasn't a news. I, I don't even have cable here. I watch, um, you know, internet and stuff, and yeah. I like to get a lot of. I like to get a lot of news that's actually outside of the United States. To be honest with you, yeah. <laughs> At least to yeah. balance it out. Yeah, know? yeah. There is. Um, I don't know if you've heard, bro. If you've heard of this, I'm sure you have. Yeah. That book or you've seen videos of the son of hamas no oh, no hamas okay one of the co-founders of hamas his son actually escaped escaped really he wrote a book he wrote really? a book so so he gives a perspective of why they hate america why they hate the u.s and that they're deceived and it's called son of hamas i found Mo it mohab mosab hunt Hassan Youssef, he spoke all over. You can find a lot of his videos on. Yeah, YouTube. I just found it's on Audible, actually. Huh. Um, yeah, dude. Like in um, oh, well, it's kind of blurry. Yeah, this is on Audible. Uh, it's gonna be blurry. It's called "Son of Hamas: A Gripping Account of Terror, Betrayal, Political Intrigue, and Unthinkable Choices" by Mosaf Hassan Youssef. Narrated, he narrated himself. Wow. Yeah, he he he's he's a. Uh, he would be like the prince, like he was going to be raised up to be one of the main leaders. His father is actually one of the co-founders, man. And uh, it's interesting. I just it's bought it. I just got it on Audible. <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting one. It's a ton of his stuff's on YouTube. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's two sides to every story. 
Yeah. But this guy was there. This guy was there, and his story more in line is in line with what we're saying. Okay. You know, than maybe what Al Jazeera would say. You know, yeah. or something like that. So, yeah. Um, my another point I wanted to bring up is this: is that remember when um, when gas was really cheap? Yep. Now. I don't know if people know this or don't know this, or maybe you forgot because of the whole COVID thing and all that stuff, you know, but um, when gas was cheap, the reason it was so low is because we were not getting, we were not depending on the Middle East for their oil. And because of that, all these people that had oil, whether it was Iran or Saudi Arabia and everything, we brought the oil down so low because we didn't need their oil to the point that it almost broke these nations. And when these nations are broke, there's no extra money. How interesting that the moment a new administration comes in, releases all that, our gas goes up. It, and now because of that, guys, every time every time we're putting gas in our cars, guess who's getting rich? Yep. And when nations get rich, it's 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 money to fund illegal terrorist activity. You know, so think about that, that when we were paying a low gas then all of a sudden these nations were broke you know so this guys this is calculated this is checkers uh this is not checkers this is chess uh, um and we have to be able to to discern this stuff you know and, and yeah definitely that's a yeah. good point that's a great point now i want to show this i want to read something real quick a scripture and just just all this is going on and look what jesus says here um and let me get the quote in luke 21 20 it says when you see jerusalem surrounded by armies then know that its desolation has come near then let those who are in judea flee to the mountains and let those who are inside the city depart and let not those who are out in the country enter in for these are the days of vengeance to to, to fulfill all that is written man um yeah. spoken of two thousand years ago uh, we can't run from it. You can't hide from it. You can't stop it. But all you can do is get right with God. I you know, agree. ultimately, these we you know these videos like this. My purpose for these videos or with talking to you, Paul, is to get people to get right with the Lord, to surrender their life to the Lord. And that's, that's good that you say that, man. Because, I mean, you don't just say that; you live it, and that's that is the purpose. Because. Um, we say these things, right? Yeah. And, and you know, when when Jesus's friend died, it says Jesus wept, right? Yeah. And like I said before, Jesus wanted to bring bring the oh, old Jerusalem. You he wanted to bring them under his wing, and they yeah. were not willing. And, and just so much care he has, and um, we need to have that same care for yeah. the people. And I think it's good that you remind her because we could get all angry and upset what's happening and there's a righteous anger where you see yeah. something happening to somebody and 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 this was unprovoked man this was something yeah. that they planned and it was evil and it came at them and you see the videos of girl little girl a girl being kidnapped taken away in the jeep by these guys and it's just it's just horrible it's horrible but we yeah. gotta for us i know like me and you we gotta maintain the perspective that um you know, the, although it is horrible, yeah. what this, the, the scripture that you read is that time is near, man. Time yeah. is near. And whatever you believe, rapture, post-trib, pre-trib, either way, it's it's near. <laughs> That's yeah. what it's saying with that verse, dude. Israel is being attacked and attacked and attacked for that little that little piece of land. I know. You know, it's being attacked. And and, and that scripture you shared, yeah, just, it's just proof right there, bro. 2,000 years ago, like you said. So and all these things are happening. Now, for those the for those Christians that are watching this, and you're like, well, those that's not the because I I hear this a lot too is and and maybe they have more information than me, but they'll say, um, those aren't the real Jews. That's not the real state uh, of Israel. That's not the real country and all this. You know, I'm sure, have you heard that talk like that? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I want to say this to those people, to those brothers that are watching this, is keep this in mind, please is that even when Israel, in the book, if you go to the Old Testament, even when they were wicked, even when they were, were, were worshiping idols, even when he allowed the Assyrians to come in and the Babylonians to come in, 
even when you read the book of Daniel, God still had a special place in his heart, even though they were worshiping idols. And I say that because I know that the the many Jews hate Jesus, don't believe in Jesus, um, disregard Jesus, say he was nothing, saying he was a charlatan, saying, you know, so please keep in mind that we always want to have the heart of God. You know, it makes me mad when somebody blasphemes Jesus. Of course, it hurts me. It hurts me deeply. But I always think back that, wow, Lord, even when they were worshiping idols and Molech and all these false uh, Baal, you still, your heart still hurt for them. Yeah. And that's that's a point I want to make to those. When I say these things about what's happening, it is no, I'm not disregarding the fact that they don't even believe in Jesus. Yeah. I'm not disregarding that. I'm just trying to have the heart of the Lord when I see what he, how, how, when he saw Jerusalem, remember, it says that he wept knowing that they were going to kill him. And he still wept. He says, how I may gather you the way a mother hen does its chicks. Yeah. His face was like a flint, like a stone pointing towards Jerusalem, man. Yeah. But regarding those, uh, those, those, those people that say this is the real Israel, Dude, my ancestors from my daughter knows she's Mexican, right? She knows she's Mexican of Mexican descent. Yeah, we're Americans, but our blood, she yeah. knows it's Mexican descent. Her kids will know they're Mexican. Her his kids will know they're Mexican. They're going to know they're Mexican. It's going to be passed down. Yeah. They're going to know their heritage, bro. The same with the Jews, but not only that, I'll say it this way, is that even though the Jews were scattered abroad, there were still remnants in there. Yeah. of Jews that were still there that never left in Israel. It's not like every single one left, bro. There were yeah. remnants. You know, there were remnants there of people yeah. that were there. And not only that, and I'll give you an example, Mexico. Mexico, you know, it was, uh, it came in, the Spaniards came in, mixed a lot of blood, you know, and there's a lot of Mexicans, probably the majority have Mexican blood. I mean, uh, Spaniard blood. Yeah. But some don't. Not yeah. everyone was pillaged, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Say the other word. There's some that never mixed in and have that Spaniard blood in them. Yeah. So I'm just saying you can't just come in and call everyone Hispanics in Mexico because not all of them were mixed in with Spaniards, you know? A good point, so, man. A good point. You know? So so there's, there's some. There's some of these Indian tribes. And so over there in the Jews, with the Jews, not all of them were scattered. So there was a remnant there. That didn't leave. So they were always there. When the land was given back, it flourished. And when it flourished, at the time in 1948, when they were given the land, yeah, the land when the land was given back to them by the UN and all that, surprisingly, you know, yeah. setting up for the end of times. So when the land was given back, it was barren. The Jews went over there. God has given the Jewish people wisdom, man. They went in and they took a deserted land and started growing fruit. Yeah, or make water irrigations, and even in the time of King David and them, they were doing that. But God's given them such wisdom, and it turned into a fruitful land of milk and honey. Yeah, but the other nations around it were jealous, and they, we want that, and they could do it where they're at. But the Jews just used the wisdom and said, "Hey, they made they made it into a beautiful place." Yeah, you know. Just, wow, amen. Stuff. That's a good good point of view, brother. You know, I, I didn't want to make this video long. I just wanted to talk with you and share with you and, and hear your point of view. And, and you know, I, I always respect what you have to say, brother. And I just thought this would be interesting to record. And um, that way other people can be informed, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. From a Christian perspective. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's interesting, you know, try not to get mad. And and, and if you're out there and you're you're looking at the news and, you know, maybe you're on Fox News or CNN or Wherever you get your news, um, a good balance, man. Get in your word because if not, you're just gonna get bitter and you're just yeah. gonna follow what what man says. Yeah. Look into the Bible and see what God says. But I was gonna ask you if I could if I could share something really quick. Yeah. Um, just a verse. Yeah. Just a verse. And this is a promise that was given to Abraham. Okay. The Lord said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, I believe it is. Now the Lord spoke to Abram. Get out of your country from your family, from your father's house to the land where I, where I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. 
and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, Israel, God put them there to be a blessing, and they have been a blessing. God's given the, the Jewish people just great wisdom. And uh, yeah, man, so let's follow scripture and just honor the Lord. Amen. I agree. I agree. So I'm going to wrap this up, brother, and uh, just appreciate you, appreciate your time. Um, and uh, we'll just talk soon, you know? Yeah. We'll talk soon. And uh, I know um, I'm going to be down there toward Thanksgiving time or so. So maybe I can I can see you. I, I'm going to take be great, man. Go see Sharon's family. and, and uh, But yeah, man, have a blessed day, brother. You too. All right.